So, over the years I've had many people contact me in various ways asking and inquiring about how I like my artwork for those juicy presentation shots in Marmoset Toolbag. And for a long time I've always cringed at the idea of doing a video explaining my process because, well, I kind of think I suck at presenting my own work, honestly. You know, I have a lot to improve on. You know, sometimes I feel like I don't have enough energy to put effort into doing them. I've done all this hard work, modeling, baking, texturing, etc. That at the end, I kind of just don't want to do it. Just want to get it up there on the art station or whatever. So I really do think I can improve here myself, but I do think enough of you struggle with this part of the process that what I do know could be beneficial to share. So I hope this is somewhat helpful to some of you. And honestly, what I do here is really quite simple. I'm going to go over weapons, but first let's look at this TV for example. I was honestly pretty proud with how the render came out, considering how little work it took to light it. You'll notice in the scene hierarchy that there's actually zero lights in the scene. I'm solely relying upon the HDRI to light it. I guess this just goes to show how good Marmoset Toolbag is lighting. But you'll also notice that I'm not using a stock HDRI that comes with Marmoset, though I usually do as they're really good. But I'm using one I found online for free. I believe I got this one from hdrihaven.com. I'll leave a link in the description below. But I spent a lot of my time finding the right HDR, uh, HDRI map to get the best feel for the asset. Because that's really what I'm trying to achieve in lighting my assets. The feel. In this particular case, I just love the reflection in the TV screen. So I stuck with it. Secondly, I'm also relying on the ray tracing features of Marmoset Toolberg that you too can use if you have a GPU capable of doing so. And I find that the difference is quite stark, but if you can't rely on ray tracing then you can just set the ambient occlusion calculation method to screen and just kind of ramp up the occlusion strength parameter to something you're happy with. It may not be physically accurate, but honestly, I don't really care, as long as it looks good. With these next points, I think we'll hop on over to one of my weapons, the Spaz-12. Now this is a good example because it's quite a long gun, and we're going to start with one of the most important changes, and that's camera field of view. By default in Marmoset Toolbag, the camera field of view is set at 45, or roughly 29mm. I mean, it's okay, but to see the whole gun, I'm having to zoom out further than I feel is necessary, and it just looks kind of awkward in renders, especially when you stack the renders on top. Secondly, 29mm isn't really a length that is used in photography, especially photography of weaponry. We should, generally speaking, be using common camera focal lengths to get something believable, because that's what our eyes are used to. So we're looking to something quite narrow. Typically, I go for somewhere around 85mm and above. I actually like to go quite high in this regard. Uh, to around 200 millimeters. So let's do a comparison between the default and the preferred focal length. Yeah, honestly, that is looking so much nicer with that narrow focal length. It yields much nicer results for those close-up renders also. But let's jump into some of the settings I use for the camera itself, because if we overlook this, we're really not helping ourselves, and there are a few settings that will really push our renders that much further. And for this, I'm going to create a new camera, which will copy the current field of view, but we set all the post effects so we can start from scratch. <laughs> you might be surprised, but there isn't much to do here to get a good result. The first thing I do, though, is to change the tone mapping from linear to ACES. And as you may notice, it's gone pretty dark. Fix this by simply increasing the exposure of the camera. This is also why I typically don't set my Substance Painter project to ACES when texturing, because it gets a bit too dark for me and it, it's a bit deceiving when texturing. Anywho, 
You may have noticed since switching to a new camera, it seems like the spaz has gone a little bit blurry. And that's because we haven't touched the sharpening post effect. Utilizing this and finding a good balance can really give a good punch to your presentation shots. But don't go too overboard. And that's about it, honestly, when it comes to post effects. Sometimes I'll add an animated film grain because it looks cool, but not all that much. If I do, it will be quite subtle. Otherwise, it can mess with the overall sharpness, I found. But it does look quite nice and cinematic. We can also play with the depth of field for those closer cut-off shots. This is actually based on the size of your objects. So if it's of real-world scale, then you're going to get the kind of depth of field you'd expect from that real focal length. So make sure your objects are scaled correctly if you're getting weird results. Now, if you have any lights in your scene and you're noticing really sharp shadows, you're going to want to soften them up. And it's really easy to do that. We just select our light and increase the diameter. This will soften up those shadow ed edges and give a nice natural fall off. This adds so much to the realism of our render. And again, you'll have to find the balance because too much and the, the light with the shadow kind of loses its power in the render. Now, oh, oh, okay. Uh, now, if you're trying to get a good shot with a good backdrop like this, I recommend modeling a curved plane for the backdrop. It doesn't have to be overly complex, as in even UV properly. But the good thing about Marmoset Toolbag is that it comes bundled with a bunch of free, high quality materials to use. So play around and find a good balance for your asset. Uh, that you're trying to show off uh, and with the ground plane. Find something that complements the colour scheme you're going with. These materials can be found in the texture panel. And that's just about it really. With every, we, everything we've gone over I'm certain you can find some decent shot for your art. Uh, I really do hope this has been helpful. Peace!